Back from The Walking Dead, this is episode 22 of season 10, um, and the final of the six bonus episodes, the season finale, the final season finale we'll get, because the next one's the series finale, and I guess the second season finale of season 10. Um, but yeah, these bonus episodes have kind of flown by, um, which in a way is good, because I've been really, really excited for this one when I first kind of start announcing details of what these bonus episodes could be and I heard about this one. This one and the Maggie one are the ones I was too, you know, like, the most excited for. So it's kind of nice that those two episodes capped off these bonus episodes. Um, and yeah, I believe this is like a proper Negan backstory episode which I'm very excited about. Um, and I think it's kind of based on a, kind of like a spin-off graphic novel maybe called Here's Negan. Um, in case you aren't aware, I have mentioned it a few times but you never know when um, you know, what video you may have watched of mine first, but I have not read the comics, um, in case of spoilers and stuff, I don't want to know too much about where stories could potentially go, um, so I have no knowledge of exactly what Negan's backstory fully is, other than what we've kind of heard about in the show. Um, so I'm really excited for this one. Uh, Negan is one of my favourite characters, um, so is Maggie, that's kind of why I was very excited for those two particular episodes with these bonus ones, and I think this is just such a good idea for a bonus extra episode um, to kind of do this and adapt an extra bit of the Walking Dead lore. Um, I think it's a very clever idea. So I'm really excited to see um, more about um, Negan and his relationship with Lucille and how he kind of became the man we met at the end of season six, I suppose. Um, should be really exciting. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one, and I've certainly been one of them. So let's just get right into it. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. Oh, God. Negan knows that song all too well. Oh, Carl. You took her sunshine away, Negan. Hey, I just wanted to thank you for oh. getting me the hell out of dog. Happy Easter, everyone. The council's voted to banish you. What you want, just... Oh, damn. Happen. Did the council really banish me? Or is this more of a Carol seizing the reins kind of situation? Yes. Little pig, little pig. Let me oh, my God. I like that this is just physically showing how much he's changed now. See you for anything but who you truly that Maggie are. can only see that guy right there. <laughs> Which is fair. Ah, good times. Hello, old friend. Well, old friend who killed my favourite character. Here we go. You tell me where you're going. I am going to let you take this to your wife. Ooh. Otherwise, I'm going to pour it down the toilet and make you watch. Wow. What a lovely man. No, don't. No. <gasps> oh! Shit. Oh, yeah, Laura. Better safe than sorry. Damn, he met her really early on. I'm a high school gym teacher. <laughs> high school. Did something go wrong? Yeah. You could say that. Oh, boy. Oh, flashbackception this episode. Oh, does he... Does he muck up the temperatures of it or something? This book sucks, it's killing me. I, I, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> You're the one that won't let me watch James Bond. Really? I'm glad this episode's called Here's Negan, because I'm like, where? Another iconic Negan look. Oh. Oh, wow. Turn the generator back on. I want to watch your movie. Phew, wow, she tastes no shit. <laughs> we are going to get your strength up, and then I will put you on my motorcycle, and I will take you wherever you want to go, wherever you can dream of. I promise. It is sad, like, how it all gets so broken for them that Negan becomes the man he does. Oh. 
Aww. This is even more wholesome knowing they're together in real life. That's the most unneegan shirt I think I've ever seen. Still be that man. That asshole really had it coming. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. Can I wear my jacket? You better. <laughs> These two are really sweet. No, 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 no. Oh, I knew it. You left it off too long. Oh, god damn it. I have something to tell you. Shit, Don't be such a pussy. This is how you get better. You gotta take it. He's just reusing all these lines. And then he beat a guy up and he put him in the hospital. Janine, I told you. That asshole had it coming. <laughs> you know how the doctors can be. They have you sit around for three hours with your ass hanging out and then they tell you everything's fine. The good news is that we caught it early on. Oh god, that's awful. Uh, he should be there. Is he with Janine? So they both had their phones off. Oh damn. what she thinks is driving stay. him to stay. kind of keep helping her. I need you to do my fighting for me, okay? That's why he calls the Bat Lucille. Here, take this. Oh. Damn girl, you pack a wallop. Oh. Enough. 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 Damn, he got it from her. And if they're not there for literally any reason, I'm gonna come back here and kill you. No questions asked. Lock him in the storage room. Well, we know Laura will be alright. For now. Seal? Oh, God. Please didn't say she died before he got back, at least. Seal? Oh, God. Oh, don't play that song, that's mean. Oh, I, th I wonder if this is where he'd get the barbed wire. Oh, he couldn't even just physically kill her himself. Forged in fire. Here's Negan. Smith. Negan Smith then, huh? Oh god. First blood. Can one of you idiots tell me what the hell is going on out there? Good things, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, I like this guy's chances. Oh, on his knees and everything. Well, look at us. Here we are again. <laughs> it's like that Paul Rudd meme. Probably the greatest love ballad ever written. I'm sure you agree. <laughs> I, see there was I bet it was fun to him to get to play this Negan again. When I see red, it's just a question of what I am capable of. And well, man, I hate to break it to you. See, I am starting to think that I am capable of damn near anything. That is kind of your downfall, though. Ah, oh, 
I like how they shot that the same way at the end of season six. Ah, split down the middle. How symbolic! Because the man who should wield that doesn't exist anymore. I miss you. I love the shit out of you. Oh God. Ugh. I'm gonna do your fighting for you. Well, this won't be the first time Lucille's been set on fire. Uh oh. If you stay here, she will kill you. I just didn't want your death on my conscience, and now it's not. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh boy. There's a lot to that look. Okay, what a phenomenal episode. Easily my favourite of these six bonus episodes, um, and without a doubt, one of my favourite episodes of season 10 in general, potentially of multiple seasons gone by. Um, absolute powerhouse from Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Hillary. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's kind of a stroke of genius um, casting Hillary as Lucille um, because the chemistry, the husband and wife kind of chemistry that Negan and Lucille have is already there from the actors. Um, and, you know, both of them are just so good and talented anyway that um, you can completely separate, you know, the real life relationship that those two have from the relationship of the characters, but also kind of take on board that knowledge and that realness that is driven behind that relationship that you see on screen, because you know it's real. I think they've got the balance of that very, very well. Um, cause, you know, I think easily it could have taken you out of the episode, maybe been like, oh, these two are actually married in real life. Um, but if anything, I felt that added to what this episode brought. And um, I imagine it was a lot of fun for those two to get to work together on this. And I think they blimmin nailed it, showing um, what that relationship was like. Um, the ups and the lows, um, <laughs> the lowest of the lows as well. Um, just the tragedy behind everything that went down with them and the fact that Negan was cheating on her with like one of her close friends it would seem. Um, and she found that out the day she found out she also had cancer but she chose to focus on, um, you know, she put herself first in that moment I guess and focus on the cancer and everything as she probably should have done. Um, I think that shows a lot of strength to Lucille. She was, she was a badass in this episode, I really enjoyed um, getting to actually see her. Um, and the strength she had to show, like just surviving in that world when it all goes to hell, um, I think takes a huge amount of strength anyway, or at least I would assume. Um, but then on top of all that, be ill as well. Um, what an incredible kind of feat of strength Lucille had to have. And also the strength to be like, you know, we've taken this as far as we can, I'm, I have to leave you, you have to go on without me. Even that I think shows a lot of strength and the fact that she kind of probably wanted him with her. Um, she was kind of pleading with him to stay because I think she knew what she wanted to do at that moment once she saw what happened to, you know, the treatment and stuff, how it all got um, destroyed. Um, she probably had her decision in mind then to take her own life. Um, and she probably would have wanted Negan there and she did it, but he still went off anyway. And she kind of took the decision out of his own hands, kind of set him free in a way. Um, it certainly set a Negan free, maybe not the Negan that she knew. Um, but yeah, just to get an insight into what Negan was like beforehand, what tendencies he continued into the Negan that we met at the end of season six. Um, because, you know, you did, you did kind of see he was a bit of an arsehole at times. Um, and he had violent tendencies as well. Um, so it's not like that's just something that's been, you know, forced upon him when the apocalypse started and everything. He almost seemed reluctant to kind of kill walkers and stuff at the start and it wasn't until Lucille had died that he'd even killed a man. Um, that was kind of the big turning point for him losing her. He's like, well, I've got nothing to lose now. And um, the fact that it bizarrely made him feel free and like he could do anything and that really added to his ego and his confidence, his brashness. And we kind of see you know, by the end of season eight, that kind of led to his downfall, you know, just his utter belief that he was gonna 
you know, kill Rick and everyone and didn't see what Eugene was kind of planning behind the scenes with all of that. Um, not knowing how far Rick was willing to go, like slicing his throat and stuff. Um, and even like little clips like that, seeing like Rick flashbacks and Michonne flashbacks kind of littered throughout this episode. Lots of callbacks in this one, even within the same episode, you could see, um, you know, when Lucille was like, oh, the asshole had it coming. She said that a couple of different times, um, which was a cool parallel. Um, right at the start, with little Herschel singing You Are My Sunshine, um, which is what Negan um, heard Carl sing to him. Um, so that was a cool little link as well. And um, <laughs> Negan, I like that he's a gamer and he was just like taunting them, being like, oh, you got your shitting pants on. And he just ended up reusing that line um, a few times with people like Gabriel, I think it was, in season eight. Um, so the fact that he's like reusing that, I think that's an interesting callback just to show. This is a great kind of exploration to think of how much of Negan, or the Negan that we first saw in the show, was there prior to that. How much of that is left now? Will any of that come back, seep to the surface? Is Negan completely brand new and changed? I like to think he is. That smile right at the end of the episode kind of scares me. Um, but I think he's more so free of the guilt he felt over Lucille more than anything. I feel that's what that smile was about. He's like, well, things are going to need to change and maybe he can just see the bright side. I don't think there's any sinister motivations behind him anymore. Um, otherwise, he probably wouldn't have burned that bat. He was letting go of that side of him, the man who used to wield that bat and the man who was born from Lucille's death. I think he is dead and gone. Um, that was very much symbolised when he burnt Lucille um, at the end there. And I think Maggie and Negan's relationship is going to be so, so interesting. Um, so we'll see where they take that in season 11. I'm so excited for that because they're two of my favourite characters. Um, and yeah, that's going to be quite the thing to deal with. And how the first episode of these bonus episodes ended um, with Negan and Maggie kind of sharing a bit of a look. Nick, well, Maggie wasn't even acknowledging Negan, she was just walking past him. And this episode ended in a very similar way, except they did look at each other in this one. And you're like, well, shit's going to hit the fan with those two next season, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Um, so yeah, just how we saw like Saviour Negan again was great fun. I bet Jeffrey Dean Morgan had a lot of fun with that as well. Um, actually making him a separate entity to the Negan that we currently know um, and have them kind of share dialogue together just shows how different these two people are now. Negan's not that man anymore. Uh, there's so much cool stuff that they did with that and kind of exploring, um, you know, is he always going to be that person? Was he always this person um, that killed Glenn Abraham way back when? Has he always had the potential to be this person now? And I feel like who Negan is now and who we got a bit of um, when he was like helping Lucille with the treatment and stuff, I feel like that's the Negan that Lucille surely believes to be the real Negan. And it's the one I like to think is also the real Negan. Um, but it's just interesting, isn't it? Like if Rick and everyone hadn't stopped Negan in season eight, like he wouldn't have changed and he wouldn't have become better. You know, he would just carried on being that awful per um, person that he was. Um, so you could even hold that idea against him. Like, he's changed, yes, but that was kind of forced on him to change um, because he was locked up for so long and he lost that war and everything. Um, so like, how much can you give credit for? And I don't know, it, it's going to be quite something to delve into, but it just, I love that this episode can show what an incredible and complex character Negan is and what an incredible actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan is. Um, like, we didn't already know that. Um, but just the differences between all these kind of different Negans that we saw throughout the episode, the kind of vulnerable, um, victimised Negan, I guess, at the start, and then the sleazeball slob Negan, um, the caring husband Negan, and when he was, like, singing that song to her, um, you are so beautiful to me, and then they actually played that song a bit later on when, um, he found that she'd become a walker, um, just the kind of tragedy in that, and just seeing that broken Negan and see him kind of born in the fire as he kind of killed Lucille and burnt his ha um, his home down. Um, so many different versions of Negan just in that one episode and Jeffrey Dean Morgan did such an incredible job and Hilary was fantastic again um, as Lucille. Um, different complexities to her. Um, the fact that she kind of stood by Negan's side even after some terrible stuff that he'd done to her um, because he'd made up for it in those interim years and months treating her um, being the man she knew he could be, 
Um, all of that was really, really interesting. And um, just some little facts like seeing what Negan's job was and the fact that he lost it because <laughs> he um, saw Red and beat up a guy and that obviously fed him to the Negan we first met and the guy who thought he was invincible and could do anything. Um, and his surname Smith, Negan Smith. I like that it's always just been Negan for so, so long. Um, and he's kind of been this larger than life character. We haven't really seen a lot of his past or anything. And then it's just something like Smith, Negan Smith, just like a, uh, you know, quite a common surname really. So that kind of really grounds him a lot more. And I find that quite interesting. And I know they took the title Here's Negan from like a comic book or graphic novel, whichever one it was. Um, but it was like laying out, like this is his identity, Negan Smith, this is Negan. Um, and that's awesome. I just loved how they kind of did all the flashbacks and everything with that throughout the entire episode. So well put together. Um, there's a lot of kind of flashing back and back and back and then refilling in the gaps and stuff. But I think it was very cohesively told, um, which they haven't always done, I think, as well, like flashbacks and stuff. So I enjoyed that a lot. Um, and yeah, seeing Carol a bit, her kind of organising, like, I'm going to take this into my own hands. Yeah, the council's banned you, you're going to live here now. Um, but it was all kind of a plea that if he did decide to come back and live at Alexandria, Carol's kind of thinking, like, well, you know, it's not my fault if she kills you anymore. Um, that felt very true to Carol, unlike last week, if you ask me. Um, kind of trying to remove herself from that guilt. Um, much like Negan did in this episode, I think he kind of absolved himself a lot of the guilt he felt over... Um, Lucille and her illness, um, her dying and everything. Um, and that freedom, maybe this is going to be a brand new Negan all over again, but hopefully someone who will get along. I don't, I wouldn't blame Maggie in the slightest if she never forgives him. I don't think we can judge Maggie for never forgiving him, even if anyone else can. Um, you know, he took her whole life away. Yes, he's been through his own shit as well. Um, but that can't excuse, you know, killing Glenn, killing Abraham and all the stuff he did then. So while we as an audience, and to an extent, I've kind of forgiven him. Um, I don't think I'll ever truly forgive him for Glenn. Um, but I can appreciate what an incredible character he is. Um, and, he's not, you know, like I said, he's one of my favourites, which I can't believe I'm saying when I first watched 701. But, um, you know, it will be fascinating to see where they take it with the relationship between her and um, him and Maggie next season. <clears throat> if he... You know, if she can ever kind of find some peace to what happened and actually live with him properly. Because she went to kill him before, you know, in Rick's last episode, she tried to. Then she realised that that Negan was kind of already dead and she made the choice not to. So I feel like maybe she can easily be in that position again. Um, but yeah, I liked that and him just going to ham on those bikers. Like once he had nothing to do, he just went down, killed them all. Um, just seeing the birth of that Negan all over again, that confidence, like how he got the jacket, that was so cool. Um, how he got the bat, and got it from Laura. It was cool to see her, just to see how long those two had known each other. No wonder she was one of the more like trusted saviors. Um, and, you know, she actually gave her, him the bat there for Lucille. And there's still a bit more room for more bats if they wanted to do it. Like, how did he even form the saviors, you know? That could be a really cool story to tell as well. So I'm glad that we didn't just get like the entire story in like a 50 minute thing, so there won't be time for all of that anyway. Um, and it's like, well, there's still maybe some more story there one day. Um, and I, I'd be very happy if they did explore it. Um, so yeah, to see Laura pop up and see the influence she had was really great fun as well. Um, but yeah, my camera battery is about to die, so I kind of have to wrap it up here. But phenomenal episode. I absolutely adored it. What a fantastic end to these bonus episodes and the season as a whole. Um, powerhouse performances by the entire cast. Um, really fascinating exploration to Negan how far he's changed, how far he still may change yet, um, how much of him is still kind of true to, you know, the person he may always be. Seeing the flashbacks with Lucille and everything was so, so good. Um, Carol felt a bit more like herself, which is nice. Um, the dynamic between Negan and Maggie, kind of contrasting how things started with them to how they ended um, with these bonus episodes and them kind of walking past each other and stuff. That was really great fun. And, you know, seeing Laura, everything with that. Just the birth of Negan, fascinating story, and I can't wait to see them continue it next season, the final season, which is insane. But what a way to end these bonus episodes and to end season 10. Um, I bloody love this episode, and I hope you did too. I hope you've really enjoyed this season. 
I certainly have. I think, you know, season 9 and 10 have been incredibly, incredibly strong. Hopefully they can continue that with the final season. But yes, thank you for watching my reactions to these bonus episodes and to season 10 as a whole. And I'll see you for Fear the Walking Dead if you watch that. Walking Dead will be on season 2 and then um, season 11 of Walking Dead. But yeah, until then, thanks for watching.